Radio Angeles. 24-hour online radio. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The three o'clock prayer. You and Jesus, Jesus. by the, the source of, of life, gush forth, forth for the souls, souls. And, and the ocean, ocean of mercy, mercy opened open up for the, for the whole world. O fount of life, on water, have mercy on us and, and of the whole world. world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have, have mercy, mercy on us and, and of the whole world. world. Of his soulful passion, have, have mercy, mercy on us and, and of the whole world. world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have, have mercy on us and, and of the whole world. world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, the, the body, the blood, 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 soul, and, and divinity. divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have, have mercy, mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, Father I in atonement, atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his soulful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, body and blood, soul, and divinity. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, mystery. I trust in you, divine mercy, fountain gushing forth from the mystery of the most blessed trinity. I trust in you, divine mercy, unfathomed by intellect, human or angelic. I trust in you, divine mercy, from which wells forth all life and happiness. I trust in you, divine mercy, better than the heavens. I, I trust in you. you. Divine mercy, source of miracles and wonders. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, encompassing the whole universe. I, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, 
descending to earth in the person of the incarnate word. I, I trust, trust in you. you. Divine mercy, which flowed out from the open wound of the heart of Jesus. I, I trust, trust in you. you. Divine mercy, enclosed in the heart of Jesus for us and especially for sinners. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, unfathomed in the institution of the sacred host. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, in the founding of the Holy Church. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, in the sacrament of holy baptism. I, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, in our justification through Jesus Christ. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, accompanying us through our whole life. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, embracing us especially at the hour of death. I, I trust, trust in you. you. Divine mercy, endowing us with immortal life. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, accompanying us every moment of our life. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, shielding us from the fire of hell. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, in the conversion of hardened sinners. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, astonishment for angels incomprehensible to saints. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, unfathomed in all the mysteries of God. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, lifting us out of every misery. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, source of our happiness and joy. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, in calling us forth from nothing to existence. I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Divine mercy, embracing all the works of his hands. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, crown of all God's handiwork. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, in which we are all immersed. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, sweet relief for anguished hearts. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, only hope of despairing souls. I, I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, repose of hearts, peace amidst fear. I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, delight and ecstasy of holy souls. I, I, I trust, trust in, you. in you. Divine mercy, inspiring hope against all hope. I, I, I trust, trust in, in you. you. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, in, in whom mercy, mercy is endless, endless and, and the treasury of, of compassion inexhaustible, look, look kindly, kindly upon us, us and increase your, your, mercy your mercy in us, in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but, but with great confidence. confidence Submit, Submit ourselves, ourselves to, your to your holy will, which is, which love, is love and mercy itself. itself. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants. 
for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so mild beyond human sublimes. And his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shout their mouth because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see. And that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Who has believed what have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or timeliness that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we esteem him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamp that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before it shares is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, strengthened for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He was put, he has put him to grief. When he made himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offerings, his offsprings. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruits of the travel of his soul and be satisfied. 
By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and with numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I put my life in your hands. 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 my life in your hands. Father, I put my life in your hands. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, I put my life in your hands. All my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, I put my life in your hands. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, I put my life in your hands. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted 
as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of Godless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley. There was a garden there, and he and his disciples entered it. The place was familiar to Judas as well, the one who was to hand him over, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. Judas took the cohorts as well as the guards supplied by the chief priests and the Pharisees and came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, aware of all that would happen to him, stepped forward and said to them, Who is it you want? They replied, Jesus the Nazarene. He answered, I am he. Now Judas, the one who was to hand him over, was there with them. As Jesus said to them, I am he, they retreated slightly and fell to the ground. Jesus put a question to them again. Who is it you want? They repeated, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus said, I have told you I am he. If I am the one you want, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest severing his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. At that, Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the soldiers of the cohorts, their tribune, and the Jewish guards arrested Jesus and bound him. They led him first to Ananas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, 
who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had proposed to the Jews the advantage of having one man die for the people. Simon Peter, in company with another disciple, kept following Jesus closely. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, stayed with Jesus as far as the high priest court's yard, while Peter was left standing at the gate. The disciple known to the high priest came out and spoke to the woman at the gate and then brought Peter in. This servant girl who kept the gate said to Peter, Are you not one of this man's followers? He replied, Not I. Now the night was cold, and the servants and the guards who were standing around had made a charcoal fire to warm themselves by. Peter joined them and stood there warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus, first about his disciples, then about his teaching. Jesus answered by saying, I have spoken publicly to any who would listen. I always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews come together. There was nothing secret about anything I said. Why do you question me? Question those who heard me when I spoke. It should be obvious that they will know what I said. At this reply, one of the guards who was standing nearby gave Jesus a sharp blow on the face. He said, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If I said anything wrong, produce the evidence. But if I spoke the truth, why hit me? And Nas next sent him bound to the high priest, Caiaphas. All through this, Simon Peter had been standing there warming himself. They said to him, Are you, Are you not, not a disciple of his? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the high priest slaves, as it happened, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had severed, insisted, But did I not see you with him in the garden? Peter denied it again. At that moment, a cock began to crow. At daybreak, they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. They did not enter the Praetorium themselves, for they had to avoid ritual impurity if they were to eat the Passover supper. Pilate came out to them and demanded, What accusation do you bring against this man? They retorted, If, if he, he were, were not a criminal, we would certainly not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said, Why do you not take him and pass judgment on him according to your law? The Jews answered, We, we may, may not put anyone to death. death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said indicating the source of death he had to die. Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus. He asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own, or have others been telling you about me? Pilate retorted, 
I am not you. It's your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my subject would be fighting to save me from being handed over to the Jews. As it is, my kingdom is not here. At this, Pilate said to him, So then, you are a king? Jesus replied, It is you who say I am a king. The reason I was born, the reason why I came into the world, is to testify to the truth. Anyone committed to the truth hears my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What does that mean? After this remark, Pilate went out again to the Jews and said to them, Speaking for myself, I find no case against this man. Recall your custom whereby I release someone to you at Passover time. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They shouted back, We want Barabbas, not this one. Barabbas was an insurrectionist. Pilate's next move was to take Jesus and have him scourged. The soldiers then wove a crown of thorns and fixed it on his head, throwing around his shoulders a cloak of royal purple. Repeatedly, they came up to him and while slapping his face, said, All hail, King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews! Pilate went out a second time and said to the crowd, Observe what I do. I'm going to bring him out to you to make you realize that I find no case against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, Pilate said to them, Look at the man. As soon as the chief priest and the temple guards saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him and crucify him yourselves. I find no case against him. The Jews responded, We have our law, and according to that law, he must die, because he made himself God's son. When Pilate heard this kind of talk, he was more afraid than ever. Going back into the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? Jesus would not give him any answer. Pilate asked him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me whatever unless it were given you from above. That is why he who handed me over to you is guilty of the greater sin. After this, Pilate was eager to release him, but the Jews shouted, If you free this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who makes himself a king becomes Caesar's rival. Pilate heard what they were saying, then brought Jesus outside and took a seat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, Gabbatha in Hebrew. It was the preparation day for Passover and the hour was about noon. He said to the Jews, Look at your king. At this, they shouted, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! 
Pilate exclaimed, What? Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests replied, We have no king but Caesar. In the end, Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus was led away and carrying the cross by himself, went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, Jesus in the middle. Pilate had an inscription placed on the cross which read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. This inscription in Hebrew, Latin and Greek was read by many of the Jews since the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. The chief priests of the Jews tried to tell Pilate, You should not have written the king of the Jews, right instead. This man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate replied, What I have written, I have written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them four ways, one for each soldier. There was also his tunic, but this tunic was woven in one piece from top to bottom and had no seam. They said to one another, We should, should not, not tear it. it. Let, Let us throw dice to see who gets get it. it. The purpose of this was to have the scripture fulfilled. They divided my garments among them, for my clothing they cast lots. And this was what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus, there stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. Seeing his mother there with a disciple whom he loved, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, there is your son. In turn, he said to the disciple, there is your mother. From that hour onward, the disciple took her into his care. After that, Jesus, realizing that everything was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture. I am thirsty. There was a, a jar there full of common wine. They stuck a sponge soaked in this wine on some hyssop and raised it to his lips. When Jesus took the wine, he said, Now it is finished. Then he bowed his head and delivered over his spirit. Let us kneel. Let us rise. Since it was the preparation day, the Jews did not want to have their bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a solemn feast day. They asked Pilate that the legs be broken and their bodies taken away. Accordingly, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the men crucified with Jesus, first of the one, then of the other. 
when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers thrust a lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This testimony has been given by an eyewitness, and his testimony is true. He tells what he knows is true, so that you may believe. These events took place for the fulfillment of scripture. Break none of his bones. There is still another scripture passage which says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, although a secret one for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate's permission to remove Jesus' body. Pilate granted it, so they came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the man who had first come to Jesus at night, likewise came, bringing a mixture of mare and aloe, which weighed about a hundred pounds. They took Jesus' body, and in accordance with Jewish burial custom, bound it up in wrappings of cloth with perfumed oils. In the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, which no one had ever been buried. Because of the Jewish preparation day, they buried Jesus there, for the tomb was close at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. My dear people of God, we celebrate today the passion of the Lord. We call it Good Friday. We think of the past years when we all went to church wearing black cloth as if going to a Ghanaian funeral as our expression of sorrow for the Lord crucified. Today, my small group here at the Holy Spirit Cathedral, Accra, unite spiritually with all of you out there certain in front of your television sets to celebrate this great event for the crucifixion of our Lord, the event of our salvation. I pray to God and ask him to bless you all who celebrate this event. COVID-19 does not permit us to get out of our homes to congregate in our parish churches for the celebration. And so I ask you who are strong and who are participating at this celebration in different corners of the country to let us all rise for a moment and remember those who have gone to the Lord on account of COVID-19.
And we pray that God would give them eternal peace. And for those who are sick, we pray God to give them the grace of his healing. For our doctors, our nurses, and other health workers, may God accompany them in their various health posts with the grace of his abundant protection. Amen. As church, we have prepared ourselves for this day by praying during Lent and by works of charity and also by fasting. We have also celebrated that great devotion or the stations of the cross on Fridays when we reenact the journey to Calvary, the arrest, the trial, the condemnation, the various falls of Jesus under the weight of the cross, the meetings with his mother, with Veronica, and with the women of Jerusalem, his nailing to the cross, his death and burial. Through these devotions, we have sought to understand the mystery of our redemption and how the suffering of the Lord becomes a saving mystery for us. Dearly beloved, I want to turn to the readings to seek what the Lord is telling us to help us enter into the mystery of the suffering of Jesus foretold by the prophets long before his birth. Today we have read from the prophet Isaiah. It is about the servant who grew up like anyone did in the society with no stately appearance nothing about him that called people's attention to himself. He had no beauty about him to win people's heart. He was deeply ordinary. This notwithstanding, he suffered humiliation and rejection. He was despised and avoided by the people, and he lost all esteem of a human person. He became so disfigured that he lost the looks of a human being. He became what you call a man of sorrows. Though harshly and unjustly treated, rejected and humiliated before people, he did not open his mouth against his oppressors. He didn't show his fist in anger. He didn't raise his fist in self-defense or in resistance. He totally submitted. And scripture uses a powerful image. He was like a lamb being led to the slaughterhouse. He totally submitted because he had a mission to fulfill. He knew that through his suffering, many will be justified. He knew he was crushed because of the sins of society. He knew he carried away the sins of humanity through his suffering. And the Bible tells us ours was the suffering he endured, the iniquities he carried. And by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. And of course, John the Baptist would eventually testify about Jesus and 
apply this prophecy to him when he saw Jesus coming towards him. He said, look, there is the Lamb of the Lord, of God, who takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29. A powerful prophecy fulfilled. Dearly beloved, as we listen to the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, proclaim to us, we did not need anyone to tell us that these prophecies were pointing to Jesus. They were prophecies about Jesus of Nazareth, the mission he was to undertake, the suffering and rejection he would endure and would eventually culminate in his death on the cross. The wood of the cross, therefore, becomes a strong symbol for us. The wood of the cross becomes a symbol of human sinfulness, a symbol of God's love for humanity, and a symbol of his hatred for sin, and indeed, a symbol of God's victory over sin. In the wood of the cross, we see the shamefulness of sin, the sins of humanity. In the wood of, of the cross, we see the wickedness of man and the injustice of society. In the cross, we see how humanity has suppressed truth and endured lies and how we have failed to put God first and at the center of our lives. Society has no more place for God. Society is pushing God outside. They're chasing God outside the bracket. In the wood of the cross, we see the display of our ungodliness. We see our evil doings and selfish undertakings. In the wood of the cross, my brothers and sisters, is displayed sin in all its forms. In the wood of the cross, we also see how God manifested his love for us because of his hatred for sin. God's love for us is at the same time his hatred for sin. In the cross, we see how God gave us his only son so that believing in him, we shall not perish but have life eternal. John chapter 3, verse 16. Because of his love for us, God made the sinless one a victim of sin so that we might become upright before God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And this is indeed the testimony of Scripture. Because God hates sin, he continuously appears to us to reconcile. He appears to us to live at peace with one another. He appears to us to live as brothers and sisters. How can we, brothers and sisters, celebrate Good Friday whilst we indulge in acts of injustice, acts of hatred for one another. In Christ Jesus, God reconciled humanity by pulling down those barriers that separated humanity from God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 to 16. And so Paul could say to the Ephesians, if I should boast at all, I shall boast in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. In the wood of the cross, my brothers and sisters, the cross that was on the hill of Calvary, that fateful Friday afternoon, the cross that hangs in your office or your room, the cross 
that hangs around your neck, the wood of the cross, that will be carried here for veneration. This indeed is our victory. To this wood of the cross is nailed the power of the evil one. To the wood of the cross is nailed the sin of the world. This cross is a sign that what enslaved us to sin has been destroyed and that goodness ultimately triumphs over evil. This is a witness of the art of the apostles. You killed Jesus out of human wickedness, but God has raised him from the, die, from the dead. God did not abandon him to Hades. God raised him to life. And of this, we are all witnesses. As chapter 2, verse 32. On the cross, Jesus lived his priesthood to the full. The victim of sacrifice that canceled the deaths of humanity. And so the writer of the letter to the Hebrews says, in Christ, we have a great high priest who is able, able to sympathize with our weakness. And having been made perfect, he has become the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Dearly beloved, I wish to call your attention to the words of Jesus from the cross in the gospel according to John as we have read today. In this passion reading, Jesus spoke three times from the cross. First, he said, Woman, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. First, we are told that at the foot of the cross were a few women, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary of Magdala. There was also the beloved disciple. Jesus, knowing that his end had come and trusted and listen to this, he entrusted his disciples and indeed the whole church represented here by John to the maternal care of his mother. Jesus told Mary, Mother, this is your son. And then he turns to John and tells John, John, this is your mother. John 19, verse 26. This statement can be said another way. Woman, this is your church. Church, this is your mother. You are speaking of Mary. Jesus entrusting the church to her maternal care and calling all of us to recognize in her that she is the mother of the church. Second, I thirst, Jesus says on the cross, John 19, verse 28. The Gospel of John reports that Jesus, knowing that everything has been completed, and in order to fulfill scriptures, said, I thirst. And so they therefore put a sponge soaked in a jar of sour wine and placed it on a stake and gave it to him. Apart from the physical thirst, that was real, 
as Jesus went through the events of Good Friday, I thirst was also an expression of Jesus, Jesus' readiness to drink the cup that the Father has given him. And this was why he reproached Peter when he drew, Peter drew his sword and cut the ear of one of those who came to arrest him. Jesus told Peter, put your sword back in this cupboard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? John 18, verse 11. Jesus was thirsty to drink the cup that the Father had given him. And when the mother, you remember, the mother of the sons of Zebedee made a request to Jesus to promise that her two sons would sit one on the right and the other on the left in his kingdom, Jesus replied, Woman, Madam, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? Matthew 20, verse 22. In the words, I thirst, Jesus declares his determination to fulfill the will of the Father, to completely fulfill the mission for which he came into the world. Jesus had said earlier when he predicted his death, now my soul is troubled, Jesus said. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but, listen to Jesus, but it is for this reason that I have come to this world. John 12, verses 27 and 28. My brothers and sisters, what about us, disciples of Jesus in the world today? When Jesus says, from the cross, I thirst, he is inviting you, he is inviting me, he is inviting us to be thirsty for goodness, to be thirsty for kindness, human kindness, to be thirsty for works of justice. Jesus invites us to thirst for compassion, for mercy, and for love. It is not only what we can receive from others, but what we can also give to others. Jesus wants to see more goodness in the world. He wants to see more kindness in this world. He wants to see more compassion in this world. He wants to see more justice and more mercy displayed in this world. He wants to see more love from you and from me, disciples today. It is finished. The third words of Jesus from the cross. Scripture tells us that after Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. We are reading from the gospel according to John. In fact, if you put the four gospels together, we normally say the seven last words of Jesus. But I'm taking and talking particularly about the last words of Jesus on the cross according to the gospel of John. And the third is this, it is finished. So Jesus, after saying it is finished, bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus has completed the work his father had assigned him. Jesus went through towns and villages, 
preaching about the reign of God. Jesus went through towns and villages, healing the sick and liberating people from demons that held them captives. God wants everyone to live a happier and a much fulfilled life. And so he invites us to enter into his kingdom. My brothers and sisters, Jesus has done his part. He calls us to continue his mission of transforming the world. To transform the world, we need to enter into his kingdom. And the only ticket that will permit us to enter into the kingdom is a change of heart. A change of heart. We need to change the way we think and the way we do things for the better. We always pray, thy kingdom come in the Lord's prayer. But we do not challenge ourselves to the essentials needed to build the kingdom of God amongst us. Jesus tells us that the fundamental requirement to building the kingdom of God among us is a change of heart. And that is requested, it's demanded from you and from me. It's demanded from every disciple of the Lord. We each need to change this change of heart in order to change the world. And this is a road of conversion which every disciple must take. My dear brothers and sisters celebrating Good Friday, I want to ask you for just a favor this day as we celebrate Good Friday. I want to ask you, let us together uproot from our heart that desire to acquire more and more and more to the disadvantage of the poor and the needy. This is called the sin of greed. It is one of the capital sins because greed generates other sins. Greed is the root of corruption. Corruption tearing our society apart. We are never satisfied and so we steal. We appropriate what does not belong to us. We don't care whether our action, our individual actions will lead other people, will lead other families to remain hungry forever. We do not care. We don't care whether our actions will impoverish people, will make people more poor, whether our actions will lead companies and organizations to collapse. We do not care. The source of all this is greed. My brothers and sisters, greed, as I mentioned, gives birth to corruption. If we wish to stop corruption in our society, in our country, let each one go deeper into his heart and deal with that bottomless desire to look for more, to take advantage of the other, to acquire what does not belong to him or her. Let us uproot this. We cannot bring corruption to an end if we do not go to the root. This is what is called greed. And I invite you all, my brothers and sisters, Christians celebrating the death of our, of our Lord Jesus, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus, to do that favor. Go deeper into yourself and approach that evil that vice so that we all will live as sisters and brothers. 
Greed is nurtured in our individual hearts. We must first deal with this individually. Then we can collectively fight corruption in the society. When we do this, then, like the Apostle Paul, we can say, I have fought the fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. And then, with Jesus, we can triumphantly say, it is finished. I have accomplished the mission you gave me. Until then, you and I, we have work to do. God bless you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we come to the second part of our service, and this is called the, lit the Solemn Intercessions as part of the Liturgy of the World. Shall we all now rise as we put before God our intentions interceding for the world. Let us pray for Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, grant your church, that your church spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Pope. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, 
we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for all others and decrees of the faithful. Let us pray also for our Bishop John Bonaventure Kofi, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, or may serve you faithfully. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for catechumens. Let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism they may be added to the number of your adopted children. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray 
for the Jewish people. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that they, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves be in constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, who created our people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, or may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office, 
our government and political leaders, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of people, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gifts be made secure. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for those in tribulation, the sick, the lost, the dismayed. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, especially COVID-19 currently ravaging our world. For those in the front lines, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, lab technicians, scientists and researchers, for the sick, the infected, the bereaved families, and for those who have lost hope and are dismayed by this current pandemic. Let us pray that God will drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and saving, saving help to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you. We pray for those who are sick of coronavirus. We pray for all who are helping in one way or the other to find cure against this virus that we all may come to rejoice because in, your, in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, we are finished with the first part. We are now going to the second part, the adoration of the Holy Cross.
Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Yeah. 
us. Look at me. Let's stay 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and remain safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, in 
not bring me judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
shall now invite you in your heart to pray the act of spiritual communion as you unite yourself with the service happening here, as in Jesus to come into your heart in a special way. You pray after me. My Jesus, My Jesus I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, ever living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please repeat after me. Almighty and merciful Father, Almighty, Almighty and merciful, and merciful Father, Father, who shows your love to all your creation, we come before you, we come we come before you, you asking for a quick control asking for a quick of the coronavirus of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Currently ravaging our world. Here graciously. Here graciously. The prayers you make for those affected. Yes. Those who are affected. affected. By the virus in various parts of the world. By the virus in most parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick. Grant healing to the sick. Eternal life to the dead eternal life to the dead and consolation to the bereaved families and consolation to the bereaved families we pray that an effective medicine we pray that medicine to combat the sickness to combat the sickness be speedily found be speedily found we pray for the relevant governments we pray for them. and health authorities and health authorities that they take appropriate steps that they they take take appropriate steps. Steps. For the good of the people. For the good of the people. Look upon us in your mercy. Look upon us in your mercy. And forgive us our failings. And forgive us our failings. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask this through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 My dear people of God, we've come to the end of our service, Good Friday service. After this, I offer the blessing to you and we all will go home in silence, waiting for the resurrection of the Christ, Jesus our Lord. We started this service with the Divine Mercy devotion. We have therefore started a novena that will end on Divine Mercy Sunday. And so I invite you all to do this novena. And our one intention is to pray that through this novena and all the prayers we are making, the good Lord will help this world, will grant healing to our land healing to our world. The good Lord will heal us of this virus, coronavirus or COVID-19. 
We want to keep those who are sick in our prayers. Those who have fallen sick, we keep them in our prayers. And as we have prayed and we keep praying, all those who are helping to accompany the sick, that they too will have the grace of God's protection. And the rest of us, I want to ask you, let us remain obedient to the letter, the directives, the government or government officials, the president himself, health workers are putting before us. And of course, the directives of the bishop's conference. My dear people, let us observe these directives meticulously. As I continuously say, I am responsible for your health. You are also responsible for my health. And so let us observe these measures, these protocols, in order to stay alive, to stay healthy. Wash your hands regularly with water, soap, run on water and soap. Do that regularly. Use sanitizers as much as possible. And of course, social distancing. I hear it is very effective, social distancing. Very effective in this moment of the coronavirus. Even in our homes, let us stay safe. Because you never know, somebody just go out, goes out and comes, you never know what he's going to bring. Social distancing, my brothers and sisters. Let us observe it for the benefit of society to the glory of God. I thank you all for participating at this service from your homes, different corners of the archdiocese, different corners of the country. And I continuously pray for you that the good Lord will bless you in your particular needs. The Lord will show his face on you you will find the grace you need of God's own presence in your lives. That whatever you are doing, God will prosper you so that the glory will be his and the benefits will be ours. I thank my small congregation here and of course a few uh, selected people from the cathedral choir who gave, who gave us a singing, just a few, four or five of them, with the organist who sang for us. I thank them. The practice they put in in order to deliver for our spiritual upliftment. I thank the choir. I thank Father who, Father Rene, who is providing the sign language in order to reach our people who, are, who have hearing challenge. Father, we thank you so much for this service you are giving to the people of God, those who have this hearing challenge. Now, on Sunday, of course, uh, Saturday, tomorrow evening, we are celebrating the vigil or the resurrection. It will be uh, broadcast live. It will be transmitted online. To you, wherever you are, you can follow the service from beginning to end. Because as you know, Holy Saturday is the peak of the church's liturgical year. All we are doing is building up towards Holy Saturday. And of course, from last night, today, Friday, and tomorrow, Saturday, and of course, at, uh, Sunday, uh, put together, this is the tridium you are celebrating. Tridium for the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it be abundant blessing on you all. Amen. So may you bow your heads and we pray for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death 
of your son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come their way. May comfort be given them and holy faith increase and everlasting redemption be made secure. We pray through Christ our Lord.